Coming to you from Byron, Mississippi, it's Lakeshore Church. And now we join Pastor Jay Frazier for today's message. We invite you to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 6, verses 16 through 19. And before I have you stand, I uh, wanted to share some things with you. Last week, we began a, a, a four-week look at where America went wrong. Uh, last week, we took a look at the life uh, that's out there if you, if you missed that. Uh, I desire for us to have a God-seeking mind through this, uh, not just stand on a soapbox and say things, but for us to be aware of where we are as a society. I think there are things that you're not hearing much of from our points of view this day and age. But uh, it is not meant to be a, a hurtful or harmful, um, even haughty. It's really from the standpoint of us to be informed. And hopefully it would transform us. Hopefully if we see areas in our life, especially to, even this one today, that we say, God, help me to be better. Help me to, help me to be different. Help, help me to swim against the tide. Help me not just to go the way everybody else is going, but to look like you in my individual life. And so I hope that's the case as well. Uh, if you're able, would you stand with us and honor God's word? Today we're looking at the lie, and uh, like I say, we'll put that in context in just a moment. Found in Proverbs chapter number 6, verses 16 through 19, we find these words. The Lord hates six things. In fact, seven are detestable to him. Arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes, feet eager to run to evil, a lying witness who gives false testimony, and one who stirs up trouble among brothers. Before we pray today, I'll just make you aware. Listen, seven things God says are detestable, abominations to him. He hates. Um, two of those direct references out of those seven have to do with lying. A lying tongue and then one who lies falsely as a witness to some, against someone else. So two out of the seven, pretty big percentage of the things that God doesn't care for, and yet directly that. Uh, today we want to share some of this, you know, you're going to have to get beyond this to really have a wonderful Sunday, okay? But I hope God changes our hearts and we see things correctly. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord. Simply, I'll ask for my words to be yours, my thoughts to be yours, and most of all, we walk in obedience to what we hear. America needs revival because America's in a mess. God, help us to be light in darkness. Help us to do the right thing in the midst of the wrong thing being done. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory for all that you do, for we ask it and pray it in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. Thank you. As I've already said, for last time we took a look at the life and uh, those blights that we have in our society. Today, I, I believe it's, it's a biggie, if not bigger, because I believe everything comes down in our life comes down to truth or a lie. And when there's the faultness there and it's not right, then it's not going to be. I believe from everything about me from the womb to the tomb, the lie is an issue. I've often thought about this. My kids, um, and, and you have them too, <laughs> They didn't come in the world telling the truth, did they? Uh, now, if you think yours did, then you're lying. I just want you to know that, okay? Just, just, to, just to play on words this morning, um, the only one that doesn't know that is you. That's what you need to know. But where America went wrong, when I think about this, when I think about this premise, lying has, has become so prevalent in our world. So much of our society is based in fantasy or fiction. Between the movie industry and all the things that are going on, there's so much fluff out there, and many times it's, it's replaced reality shows. You know, one of the funniest things about reality shows is they're not reality. Just let that sink in. It's amazing how these things have been twisted and turned. Much of what we're about in the fads and fashions everywhere, and much of it's about a lie. It's about a look or a life or a falsehood. I got to have it mentality that our world has. And my question today is, do you really have to have it? When I say that at Bass Pro Shop, do I really have to have it? You know, the Super Bowl commercials, you might not know this, but a 30-second commercial at the Super Bowl this past year was $5.6 million for 30 seconds. You know why? Because we're driven by consumerism. <laughs> we are consumed consumers, if you will. It's amazing. You would think pay that much money for 30 seconds of the time because the most people in the nation are watching the Super Bowl. Yesteryear, it was keeping up with the Joneses. You might remember Fantasy Island. Now it's become Fantasy America. I want to show you something. I told you there's some just, oh, stuff. Man, let's just get beyond this sermon. I felt this way the whole time preparing it. But I just want to show you some things. Matter of fact, look, look at this deal. If you can't really see that, that's called the U.S. debt clock. There's not many preachers in the world that tell you to take out your phone and do that. But 
if you need to see it up close because you really can't see what's happening, those numbers that are moving is how much the debt has gone up since we've been sitting and standing in this room. And it continues to while I I talk. Now, if that doesn't do enough for you, I want to show you this one that just shows the national debt. All right? Look at this one. That's the national debt as we speak. That's trillions of dollars. And some people just see that big number, and it's moving all the time, and they think, well, that's just beyond my comprehension. Well, let me tell you about it. You see the 85,241 number? That's how much it would cost every individual, not just taxpayer, not just adult. Every individual in America would have to pay that amount of money for us to get out from underneath the debt we're in. Pretty quiet, isn't it? Man, I should have stayed home today. Hmm, the lie. When we look around and say, everything's wonderful. Let me tell you something, folks. Everything is not wonderful. We owe debts that we can't pay. And one day, the, the, the back of the, of the mule is going to break. We need to understand that. I look at it. I've always wanted to be a grandparent, but I, I, I don't even want to think about the world that my grandchild, if they were born today and they're not, but in the years to come, what they're going to inherit. Mm, think about it. <laughs> one more I want to show to you. And I, I, I was just sort of amazed about this. It's also this thing of who owes. See, a lot of this, I was amazed that only, and this is, this is dated with 21 trillion. This is really before COVID. We got 6.2 trillion that we owe other foreign investors. Primar- primarily, that's Japan and China. Uh, I won't get into the politics of all that. But a lot of it is on the back of Social Security and Medicaid, Medicare, and all those kind of things that we borrowed against. And one day, we're not going to be able to sustain it. See, the reason I share that with you is much about America is based on a lie. We look around and say, oh, everything's wonderful, but really is it? Hmm. I love the saying that says, when your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep becomes your downfall. Hmm. I love Dave Ramsey when he says, if you'll live today like no one else, tomorrow you can live like no one else. Well, I can tell you how everybody else is living. See, when we think along those lines, there's a great video. I didn't have time to share it, but Ronald Reagan, talking about a long time ago, he was sitting on the, on, in a chair talking to Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. And he was, they were speculating that he was fixing to run for president. It was in the late 70s, if I remember right. And the question was asked, the national debt at that time was a few trillion, I mean, a few billion dollars. <laughs> and so they were asking him, said, how do, you, how do you deal with the national debt? How do you take care of this thing? And he said, it's real simple. And he looked at Johnny Carson who wasn't the most virtuous guy in the world, but he said, it's like your virtue. He said, sometimes you say no. And what I want you to understand today in the world that we live in, we have a lot of issues. Mm. There's something wrong in our world, folks. There's something wrong in our world when we are spending more than we're taking in. There's no other place that would work, and we're trying to make that work in the federal government, state governments, and on and on we go. Now, I want to tell you something. I'm not putting my head in the ring, but if I was president, I want to tell you two things I would do. You ready? Number one is every home in America, like they did about rural power back in the 40s, I think, or 50s, every every home in America would have natural gas. Every home. I don't care how far you live off the beaten path. They said he was crazy when I think FDR said that, and, and yet it's true today. Everybody that wants to have electricity has that right to have it in their home. Well, natural gas would be that way. When I moved to Byron, Mississippi, 10 years ago, let me tell you something. Natural gas was part of my house. I so love it. Now we're fixing to move out into the country where I'm not going to have natural gas anymore. I guess that's why it's on my mind. If I was president, everybody would have natural gas in a matter of a few years. That would be just policy. Let me tell you another new policy is that when you have a bill and whatever that bill says it's for, you don't add a lot of pork on to it by the time it's done. Uh Uh-oh. One of the biggest lies that's ever been told, and this has nothing to do with political party. This has nothing to do with conservative or liberal. This is just facts, folks. There's something wrong when you pass trillions of dollars for COVID relief, and less than 10% of it goes to COVID relief. But 90% or thereabouts goes to underwrite and goes to fund all these different kind of things that if you took the time, you would be amazed how much money of mine and yours is going to pay for stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with COVID. I said it. It's okay, the camera's not on you. But it's high time for, this would be my other policy. The policy would be this. If it has nothing to do with the law, then once we put money on it, it can only go for that law. You can't add a lot of stuff behind closed doors and underneath the table and nobody knows about it. This goes on all the time. One of the biggest lies that's told in our society 
I told you for four weeks we're going to take a look at the truth. We're going to see it, and part of this thing we need to understand is where America went wrong is we have lie after lie after lie that we tell, and yet we portray it to be the truth. And it's never going to add up. It's never going to end. Remember the slide of sin? <laughs> it sure fits there, doesn't it? Let me tell you about the lie. I think about that. Number one is this, the enemy excels in them. I told you at the beginning of this, that these four sermons, every one of them have a gen- is a Genesis issue. Our American problems today are founded in a Genesis issue. America today is trying to divorce themselves from God. In the beginning, God, it's the first four words is where it begins. And, and the further we get away from God, the more godless we're going to be. But listen to me, if you divorce yourself from God, you also divorce yourself from one called Lucifer or Satan or the enemy of our soul. See, if you divorce yourself from God, you also divorce yourself from God's story. And part of God's story is there was an angel that fell from heaven. Jesus said it. I saw him fall like lightning, and he took a third of the angels with him. I believe that's the demonic forces today. And today you and I do not wrestle against flesh and blood, against each other, against politicians, and against the world. We wrestle against an enemy, the enemy of our soul. And the enemy today excels in the lie. It's a Genesis issue in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. He he said this to Eve. He said, God said that if you did what he told you not to do, that you're going to die. And he said, you're not going to die, which was a straight-out, bold-faced, 100% lie. As soon as they disobeyed God, man began to die. And they've been dying ever since. I've got great news for you today. The next time somebody tries to hang it on God about death, God was not the author of death. Sin was. I'll tell you how far God went. He sent his only son to come to this life and come in this life to die so that he would be the sacrifice and the substitute for you and me so that we could go free and be forgiven while he paid sin's debt for you and me. Hmm. We need to understand that. And see, along these lines, the enemy excels in them. He does. He excels in the lie. (laughs) He sold that lie to them. And then the scripture says this in John chapter 8, verse 44. He's not only a liar, but he's the father of a lie. He is the seed provider. Listen to me. He is the seed provider just like our procreation. He he is the seed provider of the lie. He desires in every part of our being for us to lie and be part of it. Even today, all the lies. Think about it. God's a God of love. All the things. All about that. Why would God do this and why would God do that? It's based on a lie. We need to understand truth and stand on that. Listen, so the enemy excels in number two is society is saturated in them. Society, society is saturated. I don't know about you, but I hate dickering and, and haggling, haggling with folks. My worst is a car lot. So we get ready to, just a few years back, it was like all our cars fell apart at one time. Rode them too long, had too many miles. I had like a million miles in my driveway. And all the kids were calling for cars, and I, we, we'd had to go to, and I mean, it's some of the worst times of my life. Because I mean, I, I'd rather have a root canal without any anesthetic. I would rather just somebody pull my teeth out than to go to a car lot. So we had to go. And, of course, there you are. They walk in and say, this is my best price. I said, well, I can't do that. Well, hold on. They go back and talk to the general manager, come back and say, this is our best price. And before long, their best price has done changed three or four times. And I'm sitting there going, wait a second, where's your best price? If your best price was the first, then how did we get to the second one? Can we just get to the best price? I mean, it's crazy. And yet we've heard it so much and we're a part of it so much, you almost say, how in the world is he taking up time to even tell us? We all know that. But how much of our society is based in a lie? Hmm. Think about this one. I love this one. It's, it's, it's convicting, but I like this one. What's this? It's, it's coming. How about that? Speed limit 55, but you're doing 60. You ever thought about just stop? It says speed limit. Hmm. This is what I know. I, I, we've, we've been here for 10 years in Byram. I know how fast you can go on Sidewell Road without getting a ticket. Did you know that? It, it's not 40. I'll tell you this. Suzanne and I, we're, we're, we're moving, selling our house, we're sizing down, doing all this kind of stuff. And in that, I also got a child that's in college, I got another one that's finishing nursing school, and I got another one that still lives in my wallet. So, I, 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 I just, glad you're still with me. Um, I need money. I won't, I won't do it during church, but if you come, I, I'll tell you how much it's going to cost you after church. I'll tell you how fast you can go on Sidewell today and not get a ticket. And it's not the speed limit. It's several miles over it. Why do we have the sign if the sign's not true? The sign's a lie. And someone, oh, preacher, come on. But, but we need to understand, I want you to grab a hold of this thing, that it's so saturated our society that now we almost treat a lie like the truth. We almost say, well, we can't do any better, so it's just what it is. The last two weekends before this one, I, 
I performed two weddings, one each weekend. Hmm. I don't say that for them because one of them's here. I'm not saying this on their, their behalf. I'm going to tell you the stats. Two, two, last two weekends before this one, I, I did a wedding, both weekends. So two weddings. Here's what the average says. 53% of all marriages end in divorce. Both of those weddings, I stood up just like this, and the couple stood in front of me in a venue similar to this one, and this is what we said. We went through several vows, and at the end of the vows, we said, till death, do us part. But half of, more than half of all weddings, of all the weddings that are happening in America today, are ending in divorce. So half the people that are standing up publicly, vowing before God, but vowing before a church, vowing before family, vowing to each other, are lying. Mighty quiet. There's not a person in here that hasn't been affected by it. But I'm saying this. Here's a thought. Let's get married and don't take vows. Because do we really live up to them? There have been times, folks, I've been married to Suzanne 31 years. She's probably thought this more than me. That Listen, I thought, what was she thinking and what was I thinking? But she's got me, baby. Huh? Brother Jay, what would you do if she packed a bag and left? I'm following her. If she won't let me pack, I'm going to go naked. Why? Because I made a vow. And today we treat it nothing. We got to have a lawyer. We got to have a contract. We got to have a witness. Why? Because our society is saturated with the lie. And it's so prevalent, we don't even think anything about it anymore. Oh, and I'll have a little good time. Listen to this. <laughs> Did you know that in a lifetime, research has been done, that men, women, you're going to like this one, lie over 109,000 times in their life. Women only lie 65,000. Didn't that make the women just feel better right here in church? Elbow them say, see, I told you you're low down, good for nothing. But seriously, it's sort of sad, isn't it? It's sort of sad that I'm going to lie over 100,000 times. And I know they're little ones and they're big ones and all this kind of stuff. Getting a tight, and I told Suzanne, don't ask me if, you, if I like that hair. She just went through a color change. Well, I walk into the color change, and it didn't really hit me like it hit her. And so I went, oh, I don't know. Imagine how the rest of the day went for me. But I've told, don't, don't, don't set me up to lie. You like this dress? No, because I saw the price of it. I don't like it. Well, listen to me. We do it more than we realize. Listen to this. <laughs> People say, hey, I know what you're talking about when you don't have a clue. <laughs> hey, I heard that. No, you didn't. You were looking at your phone while I was talking to you. It's not my fault. Yes, it is your fault. Every bit of it is your fault. Hey, I'm doing fine. No, you're not. Your, your wagon of your life is just deep with stuff. You got all this kind of stuff. Come on. We put the smile on. Hey, I got caught up in traffic. No, you didn't. You hit the snooze three times this morning before you got out of bed. <laughs> well, I'd love to get together with you, but I've got plans. No, you don't have a single plan. You, your plan is just not to be with them. <laughs> Two more. I'll call you later. No, you're not going to call later. You can't wait to get off that phone. You ain't ever going to call them again. And the last one, but it's a big one, is when people said, I was just kidding. I've seen church folks now that look like serpent's tongue. Stick people. Say stuff that hurts. I'm talking about to the core. And then they drop this little thing on, I was just kidding. No, you wasn't kidding. Your heart was wanting to hurt them, and you hurt them, and then you tried to smooth it over. No, no, no. See, this is what I'm talking about. I had a hundred more, but I... Powered it down to that many. Listen to me. Let me give you another one. And it's huge for our world today. When I think about the lie, I think about leaders today in our world, in our country, people who are, who are voted on, elected to lead us, and even others that aren't elected. Leaders seem to lavish in line today. It's pretty sad in our world when you define a politician as you know when they're, when they're lying because their lips are moving. There's something wrong with that. There would be something wrong if my kids, I found out that there are other kids that they were with, teenagers, and they're in their 20s, and they're now two in their 20s. And if I found out, they told their kid, they told their friends, said, don't listen to my dad because he lies all the time. That would break my heart. Shouldn't it break our heart as American citizens when the other countries look at us and know that the leaders of our country will lie? If you get them in a tight, they'll lie their way out of it. Shouldn't that hurt us somewhere? They spin it. We call it spin now. We call it flip-flopping like a fish. Something's wrong. Isn't something wrong when the only thing that matters is when the case fits the cause? If it doesn't fit my cause, I really don't care about it. My heart's not moved. As long as it lines up with my cause, then I'm okay with that case. Shouldn't there be something wrong with that? 
Shouldn't there be something wrong when poles have replaced principles? I could provide for you many names across the aisle, across politics, leaders in our state, leaders in our country, that as soon as the polls changed, they changed. So somebody, and I heard it a long time ago, if somebody doesn't stand for something, they fall for anything. It's so sad. There's a, there's a liberal newspaper in Washington, the Washington Post. Never thought I'd quote that paper. But the Washington Post several years ago, I give them credit for it, they developed something called the Pinocchios. And they have a deal in their paper, the first and second and third and fourth Pinocchio. If you tell a real big lie, I'm talking about a bold-faced lie as a politician, they'll put the Pinocchio on you and you'll get four Pinocchios. Now, if you don't know the Disney character of Pinocchio, you're probably not going to heaven. But anyway, <laughs> Pinocchio, you know the story, came to be a life being. He, he was carved and made. And in this life being, when he'd tell a, a lie, his nose would grow. <laughs> you know what I know about Washington, D.C.? If that was true, if your nose really did grow when you, when you told a lie, there wouldn't be any oxygen or air in Washington, D.C. You hear me? Hmm. Give you one more. When I think along these lines, trust is thrown away in the lie. Truth is the way it is. It's the framework of life. We also know that to be that God is truth. We stand in a courtroom, and we hold our hand up, and we put a hand on the Bible, and we say we swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help us, God. And yet all of a sudden, a lie comes up. Today, there's very little. It seems like penalty for perjury anymore. There's very little. We, we see nothing. Sworn affidavits mean nothing. We've seen that politically lately. My point is, is when we look along these lines, trust is an issue. It's not just the lie and truth. Once truth is eradicated and harmed because of the lie, then trust is an issue. I can't tell you how many times as a pastor I've heard people say, I don't trust him. I don't trust her. They said they would do this and they didn't do it. And today they have a trust issue. I know women that have trust issues with men because the men in their life, they didn't live up to the truth of their life. They lived a lie. I know men that have an issue with women. They've done all kind of crazy mess because the women in their life didn't live up to the principles that God had for them in their life. So I know what I'm telling you today is truth, is that if we don't live in truth today and we, we substitute a lie, we just, don't, we just don't kill truth. We also kill trust with it. And trust is a byproduct. And once we don't do the right thing, then we have those issues. Hmm. See, it's also trust. We need to understand that. And I just want to share that with you today. Hmm. Well, here's what the Scriptures say about the lie. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 says, but speak in the truth and love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head Christ. So I tell people this, and this is off the beaten path a little bit with lying. There's a lot of times people say, I was just telling the truth. But if you had a terrible attitude, you need to keep it to yourself. Speak the truth in love. You know what I'm talking about? If we got a hardship that we got to deal with, it deals with conversation, I believe it's everything about me. I believe I ought to be so broken and burdened when I come to that situation. I shouldn't just take it flippantly and leave tracks on people. Colossians 3 verse 17 says, Whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Hmm. Matthew 15 11 says, It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. See, we quick on the way somebody lives, aren't we? We quick on the big old person that's eating all this stuff. We're big on the person that's drinking, and we're person on this and putting all this stuff in their body. And yet I got scripture that tells me God's more concerned about what comes out of Jay's body. <laughs> Those words that will just eat us up. James 5, 12. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes mean yes and your no mean no, so that you won't fall under judgment. Wow. What a powerful, powerful verse. Matthew 12, 36 is the last one. I tell you that on the day of judgment, people will have to account for every careless word they speak. It's something, isn't it? Have I given you enough to think about as a, as a person and as an American citizen that today we've just made the place for the lie? It's from the small one, you know, to the gigantic one. People who lead us are really just liars moving their mouth. And God's called us to be different. Places of authority, God's called us to be different. See it the way it is. So how do we fix it? I'm going to do this every week. How do we fix it? Well, my encouragement to you is this. <laughs> First, know the truth. Know the truth. You know, this is where 21 Ways fits with me. That, that journal, that thing we've, we've introduced this year, 
21 ways to be fit in 21. It helps. When you spend time in God's word, and when you spend time on, on your face before God, and when you're giving God his preeminence in your life, God will show you where you have a loose lip. Amen? And when, you, when, you're, when you want to be what God wants you to be in your life, God will show you where the things come out of your mouth are not right. You know, I've said this about it. It's so funny. Guys, you'll enjoy this part maybe. As I said, every deer hunter and every fisherman in the thing knows this. I've never caught a fish that was smaller than my shoulders. I've told this for years. I'd never seen a buck that his horns were smaller. It's always out from my shoulders. You know what I'm talking about? Man, that deer got up and he was that big. You know, how many of you, if you know deer hunting, you know what ground shrinkage is, don't you? It's when you shoot him and you get over there, he wasn't quite as big as you thought he was. It's amazing how we do that in our world. And he has exaggeration, all that. But listen, listen, listen. God help me that my yes would be yes and my no would be no. That what comes out of my mouth would be what it is. Not misrepresent something. And say, I have to watch that, guys. Listen, because I, man, run my mouth all the time. It's easy for it to get bigger and bigger and bigger. There's even a joke in church work that says it's a, pro- I'm telling you the truth, not a preacher story. <laughs> Folks, here's where we are. How do, how do we fix it? First, know the truth. John chapter number 8, verse 32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Truth being Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, Jesus said about himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We understand that way in life part, don't we? But you know what I know? I'll say this without reservation. Until you deal with the truth, you'll never get anywhere with God. You come to God with playing your games like we do with everybody else, and I'm doing the same. We're not getting anywhere with God because God's truth. He knows, doesn't he? He's already read your mail. He knows right where you are. You've got to come to him in truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So you've got to know the truth. You've got to live in it. Hmm. Matthew 5, 37 says, let your yes be yes and you know no. One more time, Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that. So you've got to live in the truth. So you know the truth. You know Christ personally, and you also live in it. But here's the biggie. Don't live a lie. Hmm. Don't live a lie. Listen, I'll show you something we, as we wind down today. I've been on a journey for, uh, it's before COVID, so I know at least two years. I remember reading before I ever knew what COVID word was. So I know it's been at least two years. But I've been on a quest in my reading to really want to know, to, to see possibly if, if it's literal. And what I mean by that is, is when you read the Word of God, what if the Bible is literal? What I mean by that, when you read a story, go, and something said or something is told for us to do, if it's literal, there's a lot of things that we, we do types and symbols to and, and we almost make it sound like it's fiction or sounds like it's good stories, but what if it's literal? And I don't want to scare you too badly. I told you there's going to be some things over these weeks that could be age sensitive, but I want you to look at this with me. In Revelation chapter 21, verse number 8, we have this, this verse. But the cowards, faithless, detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their share will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. 